uh, shall we move on to Lethal Weapon 3 then, if uh, we must? Uh, loud Lethal Weapon 3. Um, yes. <laughs> and for me, at least, the series low point. It's strange that Shane Black is so, so, so strongly associated with the Lethal Weapon films since he actually only scripted one of them. And by this third outing, he's well gone and it, it shows. Yeah. Writing duties are instead taken up by Jeffrey Bohm and the Craddock head writer Robert Mark Kamen, but it's certainly not his best work. With the seeming remit having been make it much more boring, but also much, much louder. <laughs> The premise this time is that corrupt former LAPD Lieutenant Jack Travis, played by Englishman Stuart Wilson, is using his knowledge of police procedures to steal confiscated weapons and armour-piercing, cop-killing ammunition from the LAPD stores. Why the cops have this cop-killing ammunition is not made clear, so again, don't think about it. These thefts are being investigated by Rene Russo's Lorna Cole, an internal affairs detective, an investigation into which Riggs and Murtaugh stumble after trying to stop an armed robbery while busted down to patrolmen for blowing up a building. This plot line only exists to loosely link together a series of action set pieces that are very much more than what came previously, but are conspicuously not better. Joe Pesci's Leo Getz also returns, with the former money launderer turned government witness, now... Rogers estate agent for <laughs> some reason. I mean, perhaps the film wasn't headache inducing enough without him. <laughs> I've probably given short shrift to that plot recap there, so um they get the bad guy. Mostly <laughs> by means of shooting a lot of things and blowing a lot of things up. By this third film, the saxophone's presence is now in no way acceptable and has moved into being a substantial part of the score. So that's extra non good. <laughs> As is the hilarious Mickey Mousing of the music while our heroes assault people. Yay! <laughs> there are some weird tonal shifts going on too, and it's really frustrating as the subplot of Murtaugh dealing with having shot and killed a teenage friend of his son's is emotional, dark, and quite well handled by Danny Glover, at least for the confines of the genre. Apparently not of much interest to the screenwriters or director, as it gives way too quickly to comedy yucks and a bad sitcom-level misunderstanding. Contrast that too to the early scene where Riggs traumatises a member of the public by threatening to shoot him for jaywalking. What a card! <laughs> Imagine how that would have played then, let alone now, if the victim of the joke had been black instead of white. I should probably have um, some thoughts on the direction, editing and photography, but to be honest, I wasn't paying enough critical attention to that because loud <laughs> in every way. Oh, and because this film has always made me wonder how retirement from the LAPD works. Apparently you can just decide not to. Very, fle <laughs> very flexible workspace. Very modern. <laughs> yeah. I said this film gave me a headache. And I'm not sure if I can establish a direct causal link, but it seems to play out. Uh, it oh, seems it like the one. kind of film that so. wouldn't would do just headaches. Uh, I mean, what within the first 10, 15 minutes of this film, what, they've demolished an entire building and embarked on one of the most ridiculous car chases uh, that we've seen in, in, in quite some time. Um, and, and I think also, uh, as you mentioned, threatened the life of that kid, uh, that, that guy doing the jaywalking for no particularly good reason other than they thought it'd be funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I said, if that if he had been black and a police oh, officer yeah. walks up and says, I'm going to shoot you, oh, that <laughs> plays so differently. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's just kind of my issue with Lethal Weapon 3 for the most part, is that if the one kind of flying ointment for Lethal Weapon 2 was that it needed to be a bit extra, a bit more, it needed to be turning the dials up a little bit over the first film, then Lethal Weapon 3 is very much a kind of hold my beer uh, kind of situation <laughs> yeah, with it, yeah. where it's just going absolutely all out. And, I mean, I can, to a degree, sort of understand why you would do that, but it, it, it's just made a big wall, wall of noise that I can't quite get behind. Um, it's difficult to care about anything. I mean, there's probably something in there are elements in the script that I do kind of like. The whole point of it being a corrupt cop or ex-cop that is kind of the the, the bad guy, and mm -hmm. that that does have some resonance, particularly in the modern age. But it is just not particularly well handled, and none of it's particularly well examined, and all of it's just really noisy and difficult to care about. The total shifts I used to mention a bit more in the 
Drew Lethal Weapon 4, but yeah, it's, it's always had a balance between the, the dramatic and the comedic elements, and it gets progressively more out of whack as you go along. It, it was better handled because in the first film because Shane Black's quite good at this sort of thing. Mm. Um, it's it's kind of the point of his career for the most part, and he can he writes some really witty dialogue where you can make what is ultimately you know, dark content. You know, there's nothing particularly uh, light-hearted about Lethal Weapon One, but it's also funny because the character dialogue is wittily written, and it gets progressively dumber as the series goes on and it gets more like a sitcom and Lethal Weapon 3 really suffers from that because it has some of the darkest content at the same time as some of the stupidest content and in, in it the makes same it scene. really hard yes, it, it, it just makes it really hard to care about it's, it is just a bad film it is difficult to watch there is still some bright moments in there um, again because Danny Glover and Mel Gibson have so much charisma together that they can kind of bluster their way through a lot of this mm. without... It kind of salvages it somewhat. I mean, I found ultimately it is watchable, but I wouldn't describe it as anywhere close to good. Um, it is... I'm also of the opinion that it is the least of uh, the four Lethal Weapon films. Um, it just doesn't quite hang together well enough. It's just trying to be a bit too loud. Now, clearly that worked in terms of its box office. I believe this was the most successful of them, uh, but that's no marker for quality, and this uh, this is the worst of them for, for my money. Uh, yeah, nope. Um, I would not particularly want to watch this again anytime soon. Yeah, and it's, it's all just... It just kind of feels like a lot of people involved just didn't care that much and it just kind of... It's so full of just like wee niggles and, and kind of... We think it just like makes sense. Like the scene where they go to the ice hockey rink, and they clearly they wanted like a big set piece and like an, an interesting location, so that they burst yeah. onto the ice in the middle of an ice hockey game. But then there are so many shots where people are being shot on the ice, and you're seeing Leo lie with a, a bullet wound in his arm, and the players are still playing behind them. Yeah, because it's, it's stuffed. No, nobody <laughs> told them like no, you you would be like. Watch stopping play this, but like they're like, oh no, we're ice hockey players, so we've been asked to be in this film. So what we're supposed to do is play ice hockey, right? It's like <laughs> people weren't paying attention to the details. Yeah. And then the thing that it's also kind of bothered me, and perhaps people with slightly less good memories maybe don't notice this as much. It wouldn't bother them. But uh, there's a a very minor character in the first two films. It's kind of older black guy who walks with a stick, um, who's kind of like one level below their captain or something you all see him around the squad he's called Willie the same actor is suddenly in this as a guy who runs a burger joint called Fast Eddie like we're supposed to not realise it's the same guy it's like <laughs> it wasn't that many years before um, Lethal Weapon 2 um, to Lethal Weapon 3 um, Star Trek does that a lot and Star Trek is way worse but it's like it's the same and the Bond films so you know, like it's it's a common thing but I mean, he was a police officer in the last film but he, he's a different person now okay yeah. I can recognise people's faces. That's how you know how they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fairly common ability, you know. <laughs> but that, that's uh, just a, a nit that I wanted to pick. But it's just, it's just so kind of, it's loud, like it's an actual volume loud in the way it's mixed, but it's just kind of it's visually loud as well, if you understand yeah. what I mean by that. It's just, it's just like they thought they had to have more instead of just hmm. better. No, have better. Don't just like turn everything up. It doesn't work. I mean, it's, it suffers. Lethal Weapon Two did for to this for a degree, but Lethal Weapon Three in particular is a film that only exists because the last one made more money than the previous one did. Um, it, it, there's no artistic reason for this or these characters to come about again. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they clearly didn't have any particular vision for how they wanted anything to develop. It's just well, these guys make money, so let's have them make a bit more money. And I don't disagree with that as long as the film itself is amusing at the end of the day as long as it's entertaining and Lethal Weapon 3 does not pass that bar for me um, so it is both uh, a failure on sort of just just actual practical grounds of it being a good film and the kind of more arty farty <laughs> um, artistic merits of it having any kind of purpose to exist it is just an engine to make money and to be fair it made money <laughs> but it is not a good film so yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the it's the charisma and the the kind of camaraderie between Riggs and Murtaugh, mm. um, between 
gives the glove that, that kind of salvages it and makes it watchable. Yes. Um, I, just, I wouldn't particularly suggest watching it. It's just because the rest of it's kind of so kind of rubbish, <laughs> <Like>. really. <Yes. laughs> um, 